Hi friends, it's Tiffany and Mr. Franklin, and we are going to be painting poppies today, so we thought we would invite you all to join us and have a little poppy painting class. So some of the supplies that you're going to need, you're going to need watercolor paper. You can buy sheets, uh, actually large sheets, larger than this, this has been cut down. And or you can get pads of watercolor paper. And really you can use whatever you have available to you. So whether it's you know a smaller uh, watercolor pad or if you have the larger sheets, let's all work with what we have. And the same goes for our watercolor sets. So for example, you could have something simple. Um, this is actually a Prang watercolor set, very inexpensive and easy to find. And you can find a watercolor set anywhere from Walmart to Amazon. Uh, Michael's Dick Blick. So let's all work with what we have and what you have available. And eventually we will uh, work towards getting larger palettes with pigment and creating our own palettes. But really all you need for today's simple lesson is a simple watercolor palette and watercolor paper. So I wanted to begin by teaching you, and I love, I love doing this, uh, where you're actually going to tear the watercolor paper. When I paint watercolors, I love for them to have this torn edge. And so how you achieve that is you're going to fold over your paper. And if you have like a simple credit card or a roller, it's very helpful. And then you're going to just back and forth several times and then you're going to tear it and if you've taken a class with me you know that I'm all about beauty and imperfection and so when you get little edges like this I just love them I think that they're so special so we are going to work with beauty and imperfection and authenticity. So depending on the size of the watercolor you want to create, you can just keep folding and deducing uh, your watercolor paper. So maybe you want one that's about seven by five inches and then a few petite babies. So we just keep folding. And tearing. Let's make one little tiny, tiny one because I think that's adorable. And it gets easier as you get smaller. That's lovely. I love that. Et voila. The other things that you'll want to have are some pencils. I recommend starting with a large set. Let me show you the one that I have. So something similar to this where you have everything from 8B, which means soft. So B as in boy means soft, all the way to 6H, which means hard. The, my two favorite pencils of my life for the past like 23 years, I love the 4B and the 6B. They are simply my most favorite to draw with. Um, and the reason being, go ahead and get a piece of typing paper to have, you know, just kind of for your practice and to play. But you can see with the 6B, because it's soft, you can get this like rich, dark line. And when we do draw, you want to think about line quality um, and mark making. So line quality, and mark making. Line quality when you press very light versus when you press dark and then light and then dark. And just look at all that interest that you can create by pressing 
uh, more firm and then lifting up. And you can see how I'm holding the pencil just like as an instrument and just kind of play with that. And then also um, when you hold the pencil, think about cross hatching, which is when you use line work to create areas of dark and light. So think about mark making in that sense. Just all kinds of like get your emotions out, mark making. Let your personality shine. And then of course with the 4B, um, very similar, but it's a little bit firmer. It's not as dark and dreamy. And so it's a wonderful pencil to have to sketch with as well. But just play with your, you know, what you have available. And if you can, get a sketchbook and start keeping a little journal of your drawing and painting journey. And you can practice uh, sketching and line work uh, as you grow as an artist. So you'll also need just like a simple sharpener. It doesn't have to be fancy. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and resharpen. Beautiful. Et voila. So for our watercolor painting class today, only on a few of them will we use the pencils. The rest we're just going to use our watercolors and brushes. The first thing that you're going to want to do is wet your watercolors because you're going to get the richest pigment. So I love this brush. It's a Cotman 999 uh, Windsor & Newton. But you can see, you know, with your little jar of water, like it just holds a good amount of water. And with your hands, you're just going to squeeze a couple of droplets into each little color pod. And we want those to sit for a while so that they will give us a rich, rich pigment when we paint. You'll also want to get a roll of uh, tissue paper or paper towel um, just to have on hand in case we have any happy accidents as we like to call them. And then I'm just going to wet this palette as well. Perfect. And then it's fun to have a couple of different kind of erasers. This is a harder pink eraser. And then if you have never had one of these uh, like rubber erasers, they are fantastic. When they get dirty, you can clean them like this. They lift up uh, the pigment. They're fantastic. Love, love, love them. Play with metallics. So See what your local stores have available and what can be shipped to you. Um, but we love having a little bit of divine light and pigment. It's all about love and light while we paint. So those will be marinating as well. All right. So watercolor is a wonderful meditative um, painting experience. And you can work just very peacefully. I don't have to put down any painter's plastic. Uh, it's just, it's a very nice medium to work with. So we have this paper here. I love uh, the arches with, you know, the French watercolor painting uh, paper. But of course I showed you my other uh, pads as well. And really you can work with whatever watercolor paper you have available. So I think for our first piece. Let's go ahead and we're just, for this one, we're going to draw our poppy. We don't want it to be like black and white defined. And what I mean by that is we don't want it to be cartoonish. You know, like here's the stem, here's the poppy. Um, we want to think about just the essence of the poppy and kind of lifting our pencil and you can see that faint outline of the stem and then here we'll just have that wrinkly beautiful bloom and I did want to 
over here have like a little baby bloom so you can see this little hopeful baby bloom here and then we'll have our open bloom here and let's go ahead and write the word hope all right so our first step is we're going to wet the entire paper and right now I'm using uh, a flat wash brush I love this brush I've had it for years and you're just gonna feel it like water is our friend get that water on your brush and just load it up with water and we're going to cover this little thing the entire sheet of watercolor paper be generous be liberal and you'll find the amount of water that you like to work with. It's just all an experiment and it's all a matter of just playing and having fun. So let's go ahead and I'm going to use this um, palette here and I just picked up some of the blue and you can always test it out on the little clear palette to the right. And look how pretty, that was a happy accident. So I'm going to go ahead and just, using this larger brush, just let it work its magic. I'm not going to go over where the poppy is because we um, want that to be kind of a, a crisp red. But it's okay for it to bleed a little bit, for the energy to touch, the energy of the sky to touch the, the poppy. I'm like, oh, there's a little bit of blue underneath. And then we're going to pick up some of this lime yummy green. And what I like to do with these colors is maybe get like the tiniest bit of a complementary color, like an orange or a red, just to make the green a little more muted. And I'm gonna come in here and I just tapped my brush where I want that little baby bloom. And then let's get some green going on here. When you have this beautiful green with the turquoise, it creates a patina that is just oh so lovely. When you look at nature, it's always, in a still life, anything, it's always darker in the foreground. So I'm going to pick up some of this purple and mix it with our green and grab a little more green. Just keep going. And then have some of that darker hue down here and then go back into just the green and just play with it down there. Let's go ahead and get some of that Viridian because why not? It's a little fanciful. And just play. So what we are going to do while this one dries is we're going to actually begin another little poppy bloom. So this piece here, And let's just do a beautiful, simple little poppy against a white background. So using my large wash brush, I am going to pick up some of this red, it's like a little cadmium. And I'm just going to, with my brushwork, create a little bit of striation. And think of a poppy as a cup. So see how it's cupped under here and then at the top, where the blooms are you have that uh, irregular edge and let's just let it kind of sit and work its magic and then grab some of this deeper alizarin red and just put it at the base one two three and let's just see what it does and let it create its own little beauty and magic while we are waiting for it to make magic we are going to use a smaller size six round brush with some of this uh, limey green and in a single brush stroke we're going to make a curvy 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 poppy stem and of course when you study nature and when you look under a bloom there's a shadow and so we're going to Put, we picked up some of 
the purpley green that we worked with earlier and we're just going to drop it in and if you know my work you know what I love to do and it's that cathartic pew, 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 little bit of splatters so load your brush up with water grab some pigment and flip your wrist and you can do as much or as little as you want there is no pressure and while we are, I mean, just look at the natural magic that happens when we just let it be. Just let go, let it be, let the watercolor do the work for you. So I'm going to add a baby bloom to symbolize hope. And we're just going to have it come over here. It's peeking through. Grab some more of the green. And just using the top of our brush, you can create those two little buds. And remember how we spoke about the shadow being underneath. We're going to just drop in some of that uh, purpley green. And let's go ahead and grab some more pigment of the other green. And with our baby bloom, it's just starting to bloom so there's a little hint of red at the top and those are our poppies so while this dries let's do our start our third piece which is an open poppy bloom so we're going to use our large uh, common brush and load it up with water grab some of the red and let's do an open bloom we're going to leave the center white pick up some more of the pigment and you just you don't want to overwork it you want to be you want the immediacy of what you are laying down and you want the watercolor to work its magic on its own um, for the center where we want to create dimension where it's like going inwards we're going to go ahead with the edge of our brush we're just going to pick up some of the alizarin crimson and just go around and maybe voila magic and let's go ahead and try one of our other brushes as well i love and these are not expensive brushes they're um like a three-quarter square brush. This is actually my favorite brush to work with. And we're going to grab, let me see if you can see that. And I like when the water gets a little dirty because it adds some like authenticity to the watercolors. They're not so, you know, pure of color. They're a little uh, more interesting to look at. All right, so we're gonna grab some of the red. And one of the things I commonly write when I paint two poppies is two poppies, you and me. So this poppy needs her companion. So we're gonna use, and this to me always represents my mom. She's my other poppy. And then we're going to pick up some of the alizarin. Just create that depth. Not working it too much. Et voila, we have our two poppies. So we're working with three different watercolors today and of course you can rewind this video, you can pause it, you can come back to it um, whenever you would like. So we are going to let these dry and then we shall begin our next layers.